Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, you know, is this a, a Luxro thing, a Ross and Squibb thing, an MGP thing? What is this? It's a bourbon thing. It's a bourbon thing. All right, Ben, bring it on in. All right, today we've got Bam Ezra Brooks Cast Strength Single Barrel. We've got another Lux Row product here, which is exciting because I don't think we've had one that we haven't liked yet. Not not only liked, I mean, we, there's lots of things that we like. We've we been really amazingly like impressed with yeah. Lux Row slash MGP slash Ross and Squibb. Yeah, well, because they were bought by well, MGP yeah, slash was, Ross and Squibb. Yeah. But we recently did the Rebel Cask Strength Single Barrel. Yeah. Same label as this, just different color. That's their weeded expression, and we were both exactly. really surprised really, by really it. Really, really impressed. So this is a store pick. Um, from Cork and Key in Mankato, Minnesota. Oh, wow. I've been to said store and said town. Have you really? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's a nice place. It's a nice liquor store. Yeah, that was in my um, one of my bourbon hunting sure. videos when I purchased this bottle. So hmm. let's get into the nose here. Okay. So unlike Oof. the Rebel, which is weeder, we think this is probably not a weeder. Yep, 120 proof. Okay, that's a good. And they put the actual date that it went into the barrel. That is so amazing. What was the date? Uh, 11, 21, 17. Okay. And then when was Tuesday. it? Tuesday. When was it bottled? Barrel filled. Okay, yeah. So I'm, sure, I'm assuming within the last Recently, year or so. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. So it's a fiber. Yeah. Just like that Rebel was. Mm -hmm. This has got a great nose on it. This is just everything you want out of a bourbon, to be honest. I'm trying, I'm, like there's several flavors, but none of them are distinct. Like it's... It is just kind of a nice little glazing yeah. of everything. It's oaky, it's caramely, it's brown sugary. It's down right. the that brown lane. sugar is kind of like standing up and taking roll at the moment. Yeah, bit of vanilla. But it yeah, smells really, really nice. Really nice, nice richness. Great general bourbon nose. Let's get into the palate here, see what okay. happens. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Eventually, they're going to release a bad bourbon. They, they haven't done it yet. <laughs> haven't done it yet. They have not done it yet. Yeah, that's really good. The brown sugar is prominent on the palate. Oh, wow. It's got a really um, red pepper burn that's still going. Maybe it just hit my lip wrong or something, but boy, that's got an interesting burn. It's really good. I, I know burn kind of maybe sounds like a bad thing, but... Yeah, oh in the, man. In the right proportions, it works well. I think I paid like 55 bucks for this, which is about what that... Rebel probably one yeah. cost total recommend 100% like like not only is this a good $55 bourbon I think this competes exceptionally well against double that price yeah like bourbons oh Things yeah that for people sure are hunting for like these are they're that good they really are now granted this is a single barrel so this particular bottle is exclusive to whoever purchases it from that store sure um, but I mean if I saw another one of these at another store, I would, I would definitely pick it up for it, sure. And I recently killed the uh, Ezra Brooks 99, 99 proof, mm -hmm. um, the, kind of their normal one. And that was good. And it is really, really good for something to have like an everyday one mm -hmm. bottle to keep on the shelf. So. And we did the seven year one. And that was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, to be perfectly honest, Lux Roy, I feel is kind of like one of those sleeper brands. It, it, I'm, they're probably smaller than the big dogs. Wait, and you don't hear about them mentioned quite as often in. Agreed. You know, it's like the wild turkeys, obviously the, obviously the Buffalo Traces, you know, and the who? Jack Daniels. And, yeah, who? <laughs> um, but man, everything they've put out has been good. I, honestly, we've not had a ton of their stuff, but we've had enough. I mean, we've, the, um, we've had a few of them. So now we've tried to figure this out before. Mm -hmm. uh, this is charcoal mellowed. Oh, wow. Interesting. Which this is actually a Tennessee whiskey from Kentucky. Well, it's a bourbon from Kentucky, but it's a special limited edition. So the fact that they've been purchased by 
MGP, MGP. slash Ross and Squibb. I'm always going to call it MGP. Me, me too. Me too. The fact that they were purchased by them makes me wonder, were they and are they, is this MGP juice? Because I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm not getting the strong MGP vibes off of this that I sure. do off of some of the other ones. I don't know. I don't know enough of the details of where Lux Row was and yeah. if they were a non non-producing distiller or if they actually were producing distiller. Yeah, and I don't know, and I guess yeah. maybe we should have learned that yeah. before. Maybe we should at some point, by the time we review like the 10th product from them, we'll actually know something about the distillery. Nah, but I'm not getting the hardcore MGP vibes okay. off of this one. And usually they're they're fairly noticeable. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that this is an MGP. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not an MGP um, truffle pig, but it makes me wonder, like, is Lux Road doing their own thing and then MGP just purchased them because they're a good company and they wanted to own their stuff? Or was Lux Row sourcing from MGP, like another brand that like was just Penelope was purchased. recently yeah. bought the, the label was bought by And so MGP. it'll continue flavor profiling like that, but they'll just own the brand. So that's an Who interesting does? thing. Yeah, so that's a good question. People watching have probably already Googled this and figured it out. Well, like, it, it's not super easy to figure out. They try to keep some of that stuff as trade secrets. Mm -hmm. So it's not super clear, but. That's so good. That's no matter very where, sweet no with matter a where nice it came from. Yeah. It's really, really good. So this makes me excited to, uh, it's been a while since we've done an episode of Proof Points, which if you haven't watched some of our live streams, we do a show once in a while where we'll take a few bourbons of the same proof point mm -hmm. pit them against each other in a blind flight and see who wins i'm excited to put this up against like the knob creek store picks you know knob creek what else is it? 120 we've got a couple there's uh, an elijah craig barrel yeah some of those are in the right at the 118 mid, 120s mid yeah and you know uh full proof 1792 full proof is 125 mm -hmm. i mean i think this definitely absolutely is gonna hold its own for sure, sure. In something like that so yeah if you see a store pick or, i mean if you are near Mankato and you can stop into uh, Cork and Key, definitely stop and get one of these. But if you have these in your area, certainly a recommend. Because if this one's this good, it would be hard to probably find a really bad one. Yeah. You know, single barrels vary, but- Not that much. They're they're within the same realm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's very probably rare you find one single barrel of a brand and then one of them's just absolute garbage, <laughs> you know? Right. I have yet to have that, so. Yeah. All right, well, this has been Ezra Brooks' Cast Drink Single Barrel on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.